guys, it's Siobhan Muir. Welcome back to Cooking with Siobhan. Why? Because you can. So, um, I'm going to talk to you today about making trout with garlic and lemon butter sauce. Actually, lemon butter herb sauce. You're gonna get herb along with it, but whatever. So, we're gonna make trout, and we have never done this recipe before, so you're getting to see us go, we're doing what now? Um, one of the things that Mr. SM and I have been trying to do is to change our diet, um, leaning more toward paleo and Mediterranean. A lot more fish, lots of vegetables. We already have this wonderful breakfast recipe that we really like. Um, we'll do that later. It's actually really simple. You don't even need a recipe for it, but we'll talk about that later. So right now what we're going to do is the trout with garlic, lemon butter, herb sauce. And what we have is rainbow trout, some Italian spices, which is basically thyme, oregano, and parsley. And then olive oil, garlic, butter. And then as a side, we're going to do um, zucchini. And I think, are you- Baked gonna... zucchini. Baked zucchini, yep. With garlic and salt. And this is just my nifty, cool, dead thing tea infuser that Mr. SM got for me. Because I like dead things, I dig them up periodically and identify them. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. One of the things though, when you're making a dish like this, is you're gonna need to know um, the measurements. And sometimes it, it asks for really weird measurements, and sometimes you have to calculate, especially if you're gonna double a recipe. We're not gonna do that tonight. But one of the things you should have on hand, we happen to have a magnet. And it gives you kind of the measurements and the conversions across about like, you know, how many cups of something and equals how many tablespoons and how many teaspoons and how many ounces in milliliters. Um, that's kind of important when you're trying to, especially if you're like extrapolating from a European recipe versus an American recipe, they have different measurements, but you can actually convert them across. So we happen to have this. Sometimes you can find it on the back of your utensils. We have some utensils that have this conversion, but this thing has come in really handy. The nicest one we had was in a shot glass. It was that you managed to break, right? No, it just fell. Uh -huh. I didn't break it. And we had a tile floor, and you know what happens with glass and tile yeah. floors. It's never a good introduction. <laughs> yeah, it's good for liquids. It was, yeah, it was. Oh, that's right. It was for the, it was for the liquids. This is more for dry materials. Okay, so um, he is the cook. I am more of the baker. So I'm just going to help him with the recipe, and basically he's going to do all the work. That's just how it's going to go. Pretty much that is how it's going to go tonight. Yes, and again, <clears throat> we have never made this, so it should be kind of interesting how we put this together. Okay, so it says 1.5 pounds of trout. Do you know how many pounds this was? When we it got was it? about a pound. Really? Only a pound? Yeah, we got the last four pieces they had. It came out to just about a pound, just over. Okay, so... So this is going to be fish light, but rich and flavorful, hopefully. I, I, I just decided it will be. It'll be good. Okay, good. All right. So, with <laughs> your 1.5 pounds of trout or salmon, and it says you can do this with salmon, but we specifically went and bought rainbow trout because we could. It was good. All right. So, um, two tablespoons of olive oil, which. <laughs> then, a tablespoon of the Italian seasoning, which he put together already. Um, now, the nice thing is they gave you the what Italian seasoning is. So if you don't have something that says McCormick Italian seasoning, you can always put together dried thyme, oregano, and parsley. And that's a com combination, and that makes up the Italian seasoning. Then you need a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and they said to taste. So you might need a little more, you might need a little less. Um, four garlic cloves diced. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, cooking or otherwise, we don't do four cloves of garlic. Are you insane? That's not enough garlic. How much do you think you got in there? Probably six. <laughs> Maybe seven. <laughs> we're, we're, we're kind of garlic people. <clears throat> then it says three tablespoons of lemon juice, freshly squeezed. Okay, if you don't have lemons, because not everybody hangs on to lemons, because sometimes if we hang on to them, they often do interesting things that you don't want to know about. So, but if you use a lot of lemon juice and you use it regularly, you can get away with buying a bottle of this stuff. 
because you're going to use it so fast it won't go bad. So don't worry about it if it's fresh squeezed. That's if you're going to be a foodie and a gourmet. <laughs> if you're just cooking regular day to day, it's okay to go with this. And since we started trying the Mediterranean diet, we've already used up enough lemon or lemon juice to warrant buying a bigger bottle. Yeah, we, we bought one of these, these little guys. Yeah, it didn't last. I think it, it lasted three days. Three dishes. Yeah, three dishes. Oh, not even three days. Yeah, so, all right. So while, right before I start working on the fish, I will prep the zucchini so that it can start cooking. Okay, you want me to move this so far? Sure, we can do that. But you've got the ingredients for the fish and everything taken care of, correct? Yep, I think so, okay. yeah. So let me grab a cutting board. Well, except for the white wine, the butter, and the parsley. Well, we can get to that when we... <laughs> but it's that's probably going to be more like the sauce and the, and the garnish, so no worries about that. We will get to that and you won't be like, where did this stuff come from? So for the baked zucchini, it's pretty simple. It's been washed and cleaned. I just got to cap both ends. The oven just turned on. We bake it at 350. Actually, we should set it at 360 because of 6,000 feet. So simply put, cap the zucchini. Now this is a recipe I came across in searching for some good simple Mediterranean dishes to get started with and knowing that Siobhan loves zucchini, I figured I'd give it a shot. First go around it requires a cheese and, and flavorful uh, coating which it was an okay start but I'm gonna go the way I normally cook it which is I would saute this in a butter sauce on the stove but today I'm going to put it with a little bit of olive oil and just season it with salt and garlic. And go from there. And so once the, the slices are done, I mean literally this is all we do. We put it on the rack, which I will bring over. And then let me put this over here. And so I don't make too many dishes because Siobhan loves me for making so many dishes in my prep work. I'll reuse the zucchini bowl. A little bit of oil in there, probably about a tablespoon's worth to start with. And I'm just going to A little bit of olive oil on the inside flesh of the zucchini. This can be as liberal or as conservative as you want it to be. You can put as much or as little olive oil on it. You definitely want to coat the whole, the whole zucchini though. I'm just going to put a little bit of salt on here and a small amount of garlic. And because I like garlic so much, I bought myself a salt mill or salt grinding mill and filled it with garlic because you can never have enough garlic. All done. And this goes into the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. So right now I'll set it for 15 and I'll let it go. All right, let's get going on the fish. Season the top of the fish fillets with Italian herb seasoning and salt generously. Generously. Mm -hmm. Fish fillets will have skins on the bottom, no need to salt the skin, or season the skins, which seemed kind of like a duh thing, but some folks do season both sides. This time you just don't do that. Okay. So, 
before I do that, the one thing I did is I did wash the, the trout. I dried it a little bit so it's clean. I do this because when cooking fish, sometimes some fish, the scales, because when they stick together, scales peel off and you get it on the inside of the meat. And personally, I hate it. So I am just the kind of person to just walk, give it a bath and dry it off. I don't like too much salt. So I think the flavor of the spices will do just fine. So I'm just sprinkling on the seasoning. Like Siobhan said, all it is is a little bit of oregano, a little bit of thyme, and a little bit of parsley. Yeah, it smells really good. It smells, you can definitely smell the oregano, but there's also the thyme and the, and the parsley. Okay. All right, so then it says, in a large skillet, large enough for two fish fillets, heat two tablespoons of olive oil on medium heat until heated but not smoking. <laughs> Apparently they've had some, <laughs> some experience with lighting the oil on fire. Don't do that. Um, to the hot skillet with olive oil, add the fish fillets skin side up, so flesh side down. Okay. Cook the flesh side of the fish for three to five minutes on medium heat, making sure the oil does not smoke. <laughs> it's all lightly brown. Again, they emphasize the do not smoke the oil. <laughs> puff and puff. That's right. So, the pan is nice and warm. The way I usually check is just a simple couple drops of water on it. If I hear it fizz, which it's fizzing, it's all good to go. I'll let the water burn off real quick. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of oil and per Siobhan's glorious instructions I got to put the, the meat side down first because otherwise I'd probably screw it up. So you're supposed to cook it three to five minutes at, on this medium heat. Okay. Three to five minutes. So. Okay. And I would push this one this way. Okay. Just so Perfect. that it's on heat and move that that way. Okay. There we go. So we'll cook that for a few minutes. Yeah. So three to five minutes on medium heat, and this is a little. Sorry about my arm. Three to five minutes, and making sure the oil does not smoke. So, obviously, you want to keep an eye on the keep an eye on it because if you if you ignore it, it could burn, and then you would ruin your dinner before you even got started. It did say um, making sure the oil does not smoke and until lightly brown. So you're gonna check the meat eventually and flip it over and and take a look at it to make sure that it is lightly brown. Okay. What will be the next step after this step? Flip the fillets over to, to the other side, skin side down, add more oil if needed, um, and then cook to two to four minutes to kind of, on the medium heat, through the, the skin. Okay. So let's take a look. Oh, not quite. Still a little on the white side. And we decided to use rainbow trout because they happened to have a sale on it at the time we went to get the fish. And I had been talking about trout because when Mr. SM and I met back in Flagstaff, Arizona, there was this restaurant called La Bella Via, and they would serve a trout breakfast. So you'd get trout and eggs and hash browns, and it was two to four. So I'm like, we should get some trout. He's all like, really? Trout? So that's what we're doing now is we're using rainbow trout. Um, we also found some ocean perch, but we haven't tried that one yet, so we'll have to see how that one turns out. Yep. Not in this recipe necessarily, but... But, ooh, it's looking good. It smells good, too. It smells pretty good. Yeah. Of course, that could be the olive oil, but... Shh. <laughs> All right. So we've been cooking it for about almost two minutes. 
And to go with this, I'm going to make some Asian pasta. So I've got the water boiling as well, or started to for the pasta. And that only takes about three minutes, four minutes to cook. So. Yeah, we learned the hard way. Don't do it very long. It's all done. All right, so we are three minutes in. Let's truly flip it over. Nope, no, I would yet. say another, another Give it a last minute. Meat, darn it, the fish is starting to rip apart. Yeah, we dazzle. I'm trying. Try one of the ones that's in the middle, see how that looks. Sure. Oh, that one's a little more, do you see? Yeah. But, but it can still, still go for yeah. the full four minutes. Right, and I added another minute if you want to do five, because it says three to five minutes, so it might need another minute. Okay, we can do five. The nice thing about also making a dish like this is while it's cooking, you can always do other things for sides. You can start prepping other things for sides. That's the nice thing about well, like, because otherwise you're sitting there watching the fish cook. Yeah. <laughs> it's like watching paint dry. It is kind of like watching paint dry or grass grow. But um, you can always uh, you multitask. That's okay to do while your your stuff is cooking. Because you know, otherwise you're like, are you done yet? Are you done yet? <laughs> That's why I have you. You keep everyone entertained while I'm the one staring at the fish going, are you done yet? All right. <laughs> Look. Five minutes. Time okay. to flip. Time to flip them. Okay, so. Do you want a, um, maybe a. There we go. Ooh, the fish is starting to break apart, so. Ooh, yeah, it's getting ready. Oh, it's starting to brown. Too. Yep, which is perfect. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go too much more. No. Alright, so, without thinning the trout, here Yeah. Come on. It will not turn over! I will it not! It does not want to cooperate. <laughs> Okay, what's next? So, cook this for skin side down for two, another two to four minutes on medium heat to prevent the oil from burning, because that's always really exciting. <laughs> and then what it'll say is after that two to four minutes, you're going to remove the skillet from the heat, close with a lid, and let the fish sit for five to ten minutes covered in the, uh, in the skillet until flaky and cooked through completely. Well, it's not going to need the, it might need five minutes, maybe. Yeah, so five to ten. Boy, it smells good, though. The thyme, you can really smell the thyme, along with the olive oil. Oh, describe the smell. I mean, your your readers are going to want to, or your fans are going to want to know what it smells like looking at it going, it just looks like meat with uh, spices on it. Well, it's meat with spices on it. <laughs> but it, it smells like... Um, kind of a mixture of, of the thyme and oregano. The parsley, of course, adds its own flavor, but it's really, really subtle, so you're not going to smell that. But you will smell the thyme and oregano and mixed with the olive oil. It, even though this is a Mediterranean dish, you've got to remember that the Italians live on the Mediterranean, so you're going to get a real Italian um, smell to it. A lot of the pizza, the pizza dishes um, for like the red sauce, They'll have oregano and thyme in it, and that's where you'll get that kind of Italian scent to it. And that's what it smells like. Um, yeah, it smells really good. And I'm really hungry, so this is gonna this is gonna work out great. So first things first, the zucchini has to cook for about 15 to 20 minutes, so I'm gonna take a look at it at 15, see if it's done. If it's done, then it stays out. If not, it goes back in. Okay. So then what the recipe says is remove the skillet from the heat, close the lid, and let the fish sit for five to ten minutes covered in the skillet until flaky and cooked all the way through. So basically you're kind of steaming it at this point because you don't want to overcook it, you'll burn it, but you don't want it to be undercooked. So you're leaving it and let it basically stew in its own juices. All right, so it says after the, cook, the fish is cooked through, so you'll have to wait those you know, five minutes or so, um, off the heat. Using a spatula, carefully remove the fillets to a, to the plate, separating the fish from the skin. So you're probably going to... Okay. Right? And then 
Um, carefully remove or scrape the fish skin off the bottom of the pan, making sure to leave all the cooking oils in it. You're going to use the cooking oils. Okay. So, what should we do? Should we, what plates should we put on? Should we start serving it? You think? Well, I don't understand what's the next step once we take it off and we remove the skin. Yeah, it says carefully remove fillets to the plate, separating the fish. We have never done this before, so just, you know, we're learning. Um, fish from the skin, carefully remove or scrape mm -hmm. the fish skin off the pan. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So, so we put the fish back in the pan. Let me read a little ahead. <laughs> it's okay. I know I'm asking the difficult questions. Yeah, you'll put the fish back in the pan eventually. Here for a sec. You have to read the whole recipe. What was it they said in Doctor Strange? Um, you have to, the warnings come the after. Yep. Yeah. So you have to read to the bottom of the recipe yeah. before. At the you... end of the spell. That's right, the warnings come after. That's right. All right. Mm -hmm. well, I can see it's baked a bit. So I'm going to put them out and let them go. Yeah, I would let them cool. And then we can try them. They smell good though. I can smell the garlic. Oh, that's good. Yep. So I was successful there. Yep. Okay. Hopefully they're all the way cooked through. I think they're... We're going to carefully remove the meat of the fish from the scaly skin. Put it on the plate. And then we're going to, the, it looks like, according to this recipe, you're going to use the leftover oil and, and spices, and you're going to add, you're going to make the sauce that you're going to drizzle over these, the fish. So, and then you're going to put the fish back in it. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Like I said, we've never done this before, so it'll be really easy, but it smells good, so I think, I think we'll be okay. So the pasta water is boiling, so that's good to go. Honestly, I think this might be a little pretentious to peel off the fish, off the skin, then remove the skin. I'm just almost tempted to take the fish out of the pan, put it on the plate, upside down, remove the skin that way. That's a good plan. You could I do mean, it that way too. I mean, sort of the idea is to get the meat of the fish off of the skin. That's it. You know, how you do it is up to you. <laughs> I think it's a little foolish to just go, Ooh, let's, peel this, let's peel the fish off and then Let's get the remainder skin well, off the skillet. It might mean that it's hard to get the skin off. That's what I think that they're worried about. But you, well, let's, let's do it that way. Well, we'll find out. I'll give it a shot and see if I can peel the fish off from the skin. No, no, no. Get the whole thing out and flip it over. Well, and I'm going to try both ways. Ah. I'm going to see which one works. And <laughs> if I look like an idiot, I look like an idiot. <laughs> um, you know, cooking sometimes is just an adventure and you just kind of have to go with it because they can give you directions, and you can follow them to the letter and still screw it up. So do what you're most comfortable with. And 95% of the time, I don't use directions. I just wing it. All okay. Right. Here we go. This on the heat. I know we probably shouldn't, but let's try this. Okay. I'm afraid the fish is going to fall apart. That's one concern. Yeah, that's why I would just take the whole thing if you can. Do you want a bigger piece, a bigger spatula? Yeah, it's falling apart. So, this will be very entertaining. Yeah, it's not going to come off by itself. That's why I thought you'd like a bigger one. Fine. <laughs> right tools for the job. Right tools for the job. I'm a guy. Look at that! Two at once! Shush. <laughs> How'd the zucchini turn out? The zucchini turned out good. So I was successful. It could use a little more salt, but yeah. It's really good. have removed your fish from the pan you want to leave the oils in there because what you're going to do is add the dark diced garlic which is over on yep 
Add the diced garlic, sure. lemon juice, and white wine to the same pan. Boil. I'm guessing heat on. Yes, they want it on medium heat. Yep. Or Perfect. actually, this one is medium low, so medium more like low. yeah. So about three. Four, yeah, three. four or five. Four or five. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So garlic, lemon juice, and you need. Three tablespoons of lemon juice and two tablespoons of white wine. Okay, let's start with... Okay, so... Let me make sure I've got these right. You don't want to mess it up. Two tablespoons of white wine and three tablespoons of lemon juice. I almost had those backwards. That would be bad. And there we go. Don't worry, I've botched it. <laughs> it should be two. Two of wine and three of lemon. Three of Stir those around a little bit and cook on that medium low heat for about a minute until the garlic softens, which is already softened, and but it just melt make make it um, smell good. Smells good. And then it says remove from heat. Add one tablespoon of chopped parsley and two tablespoons of butter off the heat. There's one tablespoon of parsley. Two tablespoons of butter off the heat. So I'm gonna move it back here so I can melt the butter a little bit. Stirring until the butter melts and forms a creamy mixture. Looks and smells really good because you get the kind of tang of the wine along with the garlic, and then you have the sweetness of the butter. Once you get that to melt, okay. It says add the fish to the pan and then spoon the sauce over the fish and then top the fish and sauce with the remaining one tablespoon of parsley and serve. Well, uh, usually use about a teaspoon of salt, throw a little bit of avocado oil in here. There we go, so that the pasta doesn't stick too much. Let me start around. I'll look at that. Let's use it all up. Okay. So when you're making Asian pasta, um, in addition to putting the oil and the salt in, you want to only run it, it, boil it for only about four minutes, because otherwise... This pasta cooks extremely quickly. And so I need to get the strainer. Back in. Yeah. I'm gonna heat back up a little bit. Mm. 
And you definitely want all of this trout to be covered in sauce because it smells really, really good. All right. You want to do the trout on? Yep, we're going to do the display here in a moment. Yeah, I usually toss the Asian pasta a little bit. Oh, system. that's true, yeah. When you're so using it for stir fry. Oh, it doesn't stick too much. It's the only problem with the Asian pasta is if you don't add a little bit of oil to it, it sticks after a while and it becomes a mess. Well, like no, one it's giant solid mat mess. <laughs> All right. All so, right. with that said, There you go. It is obviously a color-coded <laughs> meal. Basically, you have green and kind of creamy white, but it's still a pretty good, and it smells really good. And it's pretty balanced. You have pasta, meat, and a little bit of veggie. And lots of garlic. Let me tell you, you have more garlic you can shake a stick at. So, there you have it. Mm -hmm. How long did that take? Uh, about an hour total. About an hour total. Now, you could probably cut the, the time in, in half um, if you had a lot of this stuff already prepped. So, you know, if you had already chopped up these things, it would have been a little faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, he had already put together the, the the mixture of spices. So that made it really easy too because you just throw it on. So that does take a little bit of prep. I'd say it would it's a solid hour to put it all together if you do the prep just beforehand. If you well, do the prep earlier. From start to finish, we did three items all within an hour. Which is pretty good considering they take three different ways of cooking. One's boiled, one's sauteed, and one's uh, baked. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yay. So thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you for joining us. Definitely if you enjoyed watching us cook, because he's the cook and I'm the baker, definitely subscribe. You know, hit that little bell wherever it is. It could be over here, it could be down there. I don't know. They move it depending on if whether you're looking at mobile or if you're actually on like a desktop. But definitely ring that bell, subscribe to my channel, learn more about cooking and baking. So thank you for joining us. Happy eating, happy making, happy baking, happy eating, and happy eating. Bye! Bye everyone!